News, and I watch him oh so regularly. Lovely to see you both. How are you? Great to see you both. Right. So, Sarah, take us through the expectations of uh, the next few minutes, because uh, any time we're going to start to see live pictures, people already inside cathedrals in Wales. Yes, and Charles is going to set foot on Welsh soil for the first time as king, uh, the land that gave him his title as the Prince of Wales. And he is going to be attending a service at Chandath Cathedral, service of prayer and reflection. We're going to have a 21-gun salute to mark his arrival. Uh, military presence there as well, more of the ceremony that we've seen over the previous days. And then he will travel to the Senate to meet the First Minister, Mark Drakeford. And uh, meetings at Cardiff Castle as well. More walkabouts, getting out amongst the people. We are also expecting some protests, potentially a silent protest, because there is, among some in Wales, disappointment and anger that the title of the Prince of Wales was automatically handed to Prince William. Those who feel that it shouldn't have been done so, particularly without consideration. And um, there were protests back in 1969 as well at the time of Charles' investiture as Prince of Wales. 70 to 80 percent approval ratings at that time but still very vocal protests and it will be interesting to see what we see today on the streets of wales what would they prefer have happened the title not to be awarded or to uh, or because it's a, essentially a form of separatism so it goes back to the 13th century and uh the taking over of wales by the english and um there is a feeling that perhaps this should be a welsh title not a hereditary title given to the heir to the throne. Mark Dolan, uh, when you're on air, there are these little landmines everywhere, including how some people feel in Wales about events like what's going to be happening today. How have you been traversing well, those? Absolutely. I mean, I think that, that those voices that will be uh, concerned about the appointment of uh, William as Prince of Wales will be, will be in the minority and short-lived because William is box office. <laughs> And it's great news for the royal family to have this guy. He's probably, you know, our greatest asset now, him and Kate. Not to take anything away from the new king and uh, Queen Camilla, but, you know, this guy's the future. Um, he's telegenic, he's photogenic, he's charming. He's brilliant at reading the public mood, and he will be a magnificent Prince of Wales. And I'm confident that he'll do the people of Wales very proud. And it's interesting, uh, as Sarah mentioned, that uh, Charles, of course, now focused on his visit to Wales. The Queen passed away in Scotland uh, at Balmoral, which was her favourite home. And the first thing Charles did on Wednesday was to go to Northern Ireland. And that's because he has two challenges for his monarchy. And that's to preserve the United Kingdom, the Union of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. And he's starting at home by consolidating the political project that is the Act of Union, holding the country together, which, by the way, is no mean feat at the moment. Well, also, I, I get the sense that as the Queen built the Commonwealth, Charles is going to want to strengthen it and therefore doesn't have known aggressive views about Antigua and Barbados and potentially places like Australia, that if the transition was, OK, you're not, we're not going to have a role as your head you're of no state. You're no longer be head of state, but you remain a much-loved member of the Commonwealth. Which is the approach that was taken to Barbados. He attended the independence ceremony there, and it was done with the monarch's blessing. Yeah, because you get that feeling where, as, as they're trying to move to a, a, a modernisation, the inevitable changes and challenges, the demographic changes in this country where the view might be a little bit different depending on where you are on the spectrum, those sorts of things are about cementing irrelevance, cementing a, a role, and also for all of this talk about you're going to be an activist king, all the rest of it, uh, no one's expecting him to turn up on the balcony and just start uh, you know, yapping for a few hours, but the way he'll be able to do that is through collective world leadership like things like that. We're not going to hear him delivering speeches campaigning on the environment anymore, but that issue doesn't go away.